One of the most frequently asked questions I get on this channel is how do I get my YouTube audio so clean? And really, it's all about getting a high quality microphone and getting that high quality microphone in the right location. And there's primarily four different types of microphones I see used in YouTube videos. And the first one is lapel mics. Now, lapel mics are often very inexpensive and they do get that microphone close to your sound source, but they do have a couple of disadvantages. The first one is the capsule in those microphones is very small, which often isn't able to capture a full range of sound and get you the most full sounding audio. The other thing about it, a lapel mic that sits on your chest isn't actually getting the best of the highs coming out of your mouth. They're actually shooting out and bouncing around the room and that lapel mic will be sitting on your chest, mostly picking up that reverberation coming from your chest. So you get a very, very bassy sound from the mic on the chest, and then the higher sounds from your voice are actually bouncing off the walls and coming back into the microphone, and it's picking up those. So particularly in an environment where you're indoors like this, that doesn't always sound the best. And if you do use a lapel mic, it's often better to get it sort of further down your shirt and it's gonna sound a little bit better. But it's definitely not the best that we can do for YouTube audio. The other one I see is a microphone on top of the camera. Now, this isn't a terrible solution, but that microphone on top of the camera is gonna sound way better if you put it on a boom pole or a stand and get it closer to your mouth because the closer any microphone is to the sound source, the better. The other thing with a microphone like that is if you shoot a camera angle where you're off to the side, you're not in the center of frame, the microphone on top of your camera is just gonna be pointing exactly where your lens is pointing. So it might not necessarily always be pointing in the right location to pick up the best sound. And the third one I often see is wireless microphone kits. And these are great for their flexibility. And if you're somebody that's doing a lot of movement in your YouTube video, then I think those can often be quite a good solution but they also have the same disadvantages that you get with a lapel mic. And that is the fact that the best highs from your voice are actually missing the microphone. You're picking up that chesty sound sort of from your chest or those deep lows. So you often have to do a fair bit in editing to make those microphone systems sound their best. So what I use for all of my videos is a high quality microphone. In this case, it is the Saramonic V6 shotgun microphone, and I've just boomed it out of shot. This gives us a number of advantages. First of all, I've got this microphone as close as I can to my mouth while still being out of shot. The closer you get any microphone to the sound source, the better that is going to sound, and the more you're gonna pick up from the sound that you want, which is my voice coming from my mouth, and the less you're gonna pick up of the room tone, the noises around me, or reverberations off the walls. The next thing, when we compare that to say like a lapel mic, we have the ability to get a full size, high quality capsule in that microphone. What that's gonna do for us is that is going to be able to capture a more, more full range of the sounds coming into the microphone. And we aren't limited by that tiny little size because inside these microphones is what's called a diaphragm. And it's a tiny little thing that the sound of your voice moves and that's how it turns sort of that movement or that vibration in the air into sound. And the bigger we can have that capsule, generally the more full the sound is going to be. So you're going to get a much more full sound from a microphone like this. The other thing you're gonna get from a high quality boom mic like this is it's very directional. It's really designed to be pointing in one direction and a shotgun microphone like this is designed to reject sounds from the side and the back and really focus on sounds from the front. A lapel mic is designed to just pick up sounds in all directions. So although it being closer to your mouth than anything else or closer to your chest than anything else, it is going to get more of that sound. It's actually going to be trying to pick up sound from every direction, where a directional microphone like this shotgun microphone is really gonna try to hone it and focus on the sound of my voice and the sound coming from the place that it's actually pointing at. Now, if there's any disadvantages to this type of sort of off-camera shotgun microphone, it's the fact that a very high quality one can be fairly expensive in the scheme of things. And often it will be sort of, if you're somebody that's got a sort of a lower level entry level camera, 
a microphone like this can often cost almost as much as the camera. But the thing that we have to know about microphones is microphones like this can be a lifelong investment. Your camera, you're gonna buy and every so many years is gonna be new technology and you're going to probably upgrade that. But there are microphones out there being sort of used in Hollywood and commercial video productions. Some of these microphones have been in use for like 30 or 40 years. And actually some of the most expensive microphones you can buy are still designed from 30 or 40 years ago. They haven't changed at all. We do have to understand that when we're buying this type of microphone, whether it be for YouTube or any sort of video production, we are looking at a lifelong investment. So whatever the cost of that is, if you think you can sort of use it for the next 30 years, or if you need to capture this type of audio for the next 30 years, you kind of have to take the price you're paying and divide it by the 30 years, because that is going to be the useful life of that microphone. And in many cases, and in my case particularly, my best high quality microphones will likely out live me and will have to be left in the will to someone. All the audio you're hearing in this video is from a microphone that was sent out to me by a company called Saramonic. Now, this is a company that not a lot of people know about, but they've been around a few years and they make some very, very high quality microphones. Certainly, I would consider most of their products at a similar level to somebody like Rode or Deity or Sennheiser even though the name is not quite as well known. Now, they sent this microphone out to me at no cost to myself so that I could test it out, and if I liked it, maybe make a video about it. And I thought this was a good opportunity to sort of demonstrate how this microphone sounds in a YouTube setup like this. Now, in addition to this being a fantastic sounding microphone, it comes in this crazy microphone kit. It comes with this hard-sided sort of Pelican style case, and it includes pretty much everything that you could possibly need to make use of this microphone. It comes with the plosive filter, which is what I've got on it now. It comes with a furry dead cat that you can put on it if you're going to go outdoors. It comes with a short XLR cable to hook it up to an XLR recorder. It comes with a hard clip if you're gonna use it sort of on a hard boom stand. It comes with a shock mounted clip if you're gonna mount it in a situation where that sort of boom arm or something might get bumped and there's gonna be sounds transferring through to the microphone. This has these sort of rubber band configuration that suspends the thing in the air so that sound or those bumps aren't actually going to go through to the microphone. So it pretty much comes with everything you could possibly need to operate this microphone. Now, the only thing that we really need to know and is important to know about microphones of this type is the fact that you need to have an XLR interface to run them into. Now, in my case, I've got a couple of different ways that I do this. Sometimes I run it into an external audio recorder. And in that case, uh, I use the Zoom F3. I will link that in the description below. This is amazing audio recorder recorder because what it does, it allows you to record what they call 32-bit float audio, which means you don't have to even set your audio levels, and it means you can never go too high and, and max out your audio, or you've never put the, the, uh, the gain up too low. So it actually makes it kind of idiot-proof in recording your audio. The other one is sometimes, and for a little bit less money, I would use an audio interface that just runs right into the computer. And if you've got a computer sort of right by where you're shooting your YouTube videos, this is probably the most cost-effective way to capture that audio. And I will link in the description down below sort of the best price interface that I know of that captures really clean audio at a really low price. And I'll also put a link to sort of everything, the, the microphone and everything I've talked about in this video. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where you're sort of using a small, inexpensive microphone, and you're trying to get the best sound out of it, and you're not quite ready to upgrade to a pro-level microphone like this. I've just thrown a video on screen now. Now, go check out this video. This is gonna, gonna give you some tips and tricks on how to get the best sound out of a small, inexpensive microphone.